And such characteristics of computer-based gaming mesh very nicely with findings from neuroplasticity research, which show that the functional organization of the brain at the cellular level can be changed and behaviors improved through intensive training. And what the studies have found is a need for intense and frequent trials. Focused attention to a task, individually adaptive trials, a correction of errors, and timely rewards of correct responses to reinforce learning and maintain motivation. This research from the field of education and cognitive psychology was coming together for me at about the same time the school where I was teaching bought the Fast Forward series of trainings. I must admit, I was a doubter. I was a veteran teacher and I was a loud naysayer even. So I decided to go through the training myself. I started by completing the literacy program. And as I was working through the literacy software, it was then that I noticed the implicit grammar instruction embedded in the exercises. And I began to make connections between what these exercises were training and how I was teaching writing. It was this aha moment that turned into my doctoral thesis and the beginning of my career in research. Let me begin by highlighting a few of the examples of the training that relate specifically to writing. In both of the studies I've conducted, students completed the first little level of training, which are the literacy exercises. The literacy exercises train every rule of English grammar. This screenshot is from Stellar Stories. In this example, the student hears the baby who is hugging the big sister is crying. Notice that you cannot answer this prompt correctly based on vocabulary alone. You must comprehend the grammar. The foils in each command are as important as the correct answer. So, of course, the correct answer is number two. Not only is the student working with subordinate clauses here, but they are also building their working memory capacity through articulatory rehearsal. Students naturally repeat the sentence silently to themselves, which is the same thing we do as we articulate the words in our head and transcribe them to paper. In this next example, the students here, Sally left her lunch on the city bus. Notice the focus is on verb tenses. So in the top left corner, the verb will leave is future tense. In the top right is leaving, is present tense. And in the bottom is past tense. Notice the student does not need to recite a rule in order to get the answer correct. We didn't need to create a grid and conjugate a list of verbs. Rather, the student applies the rule in context. So, of course, the bottom square is the correct answer. Sally left her bus for lunch left her lunch on the city bus. I also want to mention the training provides students with frequent practice and immediate feedback. This practice and immediate feedback builds a level of automaticity, and this is what writing demands, applying the rules of English grammar with automaticity. The next few exercises I'm going to show you take students from constructing simple sentences to complex sentences from a single sentence to a paragraph, and then into developing coherent multiple paragraphs. While the exercises were designed to teach reading, as an English teacher, I noticed that all of the exercises give students practice with the subskills that are important for writing. Note, the training covers every rule of English grammar, but the rules of grammar are not explicitly taught. Rather, they're taught in context. In this clip, the student is learning the correct use of superlatives. So here we have not everyone could be the best at everything. Some kids do badly in music, but do very well in art. And the next one, the kid who writes the best stories might have the worst handwriting. Most people would rather do things they are better at. You notice learning is reinforced through repetition, and in this case, it was five trials in a row. 
You'll also notice feedback is immediate. The student receives rewards such as earning points, stars, and animations, which helps maintain attention and build motivation. In some ways, Hog Hat Zone, which is what we're looking at currently, is a more advanced version of Leaping Lizards. In this exercise, students are applying all of the rules and grammar in context. But the sentences are more complex and are used to build paragraphs, which forces students to maintain more content and working memory for longer periods of time, a skill which is needed for writing. And I want you to notice that just like we write in chunks or phrases, the exercise also builds sentences from phrases. And the sentences are used to build paragraphs. Let's take a look. In this example, the students are working with pronouns and verbs. In the first sentence, the student needs to look ahead to figure out which pronoun to use. They're building their working memory. It was very dark, and the wind howled around blank. But Dorothy, okay, so Dorothy cues the student that the correct answer is her and not him. The student need to know, the student did not need to know that they were applying the objective case of the pronoun. And in the next chunk, the sentence asks the students to choose the correct verb tense. The rule is not to switch tenses in a paragraph. So again, the student must hold the sentence in working memory as she looks for the tense being used. And in the last sentence, the instruction returns to its focus to the correct form of the pronoun. So in the first sentence, you didn't need to know that the pronoun you're using her is called an objective pronoun, but you did need to know how to apply the rule for selecting the correct pronoun in the context of that sentence. Now, this third sentence calls for the same. You don't need to know that you are choosing the nominative case of the pronoun, but you do need to know how to apply it. After the first few whirls around and one other time when the house tipped badly, she felt as if she were being rocked gently. like a baby in a cradle. Throughout the training, students are presented with hundreds of decisions to be made as they apply the rules of grammar in context. What I became interested in investigating is question one, do they internalize the rules? And question two, can they apply the rules to their own writing? Before we answer these two questions, let's examine another exercise. In toad loader, in toad loader, students are building sentences that describe an illustration. In this exercise, the student is not physically writing sentences, but they are going through the same thought processes as if they were. Let me take you through a portion of the exercise. You see the sentence starter in front of a table of guests. In this case, the student chose happy toucan which is wrong. The student hears a clunk and they know that they got the wrong answer. And then the right answer appears, the Swiss chef. So they are getting that corrective feedback in real time, which is the most effective way to learn. This is a real strength that cannot be overemphasized because traditional classroom instruction cannot offer real-time student-teacher interaction that computers can. And I know this firsthand when you have 25 to 30 students in a classroom and you're trying your hardest to give them that immediate feedback. It's not as easy as it, what computers are able to do. So let's take a look to finish this sentence. And as you try to finish the sentence, did you notice that you needed to master the rules of grammar to get it right? It's not about matching the vocabulary. Instead, the correct answer is dependent on the verb. And finally, the student reads the complete sentence in its entirety. Let's continue in the same exercise for just a moment. Did you notice that this second sentence is building off the first sentence? 
this is what we do in real writing. We write connected sentences. As you try to complete this sentence, did you notice that again, the correct answer is dependent on using the correct form of the verb? The patrons approve the, of the hamburger. Notice the rule, plural subject equals singular predicate. So the patrons approve of the hamburger. And in the most advanced level of the training, students build multiple paragraph passages. As I mentioned earlier, all of the students in both of the studies I've conducted completed all of the initial train, literacy training and varying degrees of the reading series. So the effects of this computer-based cognitive literacy skills training on students' write, basic writing skills is what I wanted to evaluate empirically in my studies. 